Je vous, je vous remercie beaucoup de votre présenté. Excellent présentation et again the good work, the successful experience, the successful collaboration between uh, African countries is very inspiring us all together to keep the good work. And I believe we can exp expanding this kind of great success to different uh, kind of liver disease, like in the liver cancer, metabolic liver disease, and surgery and liver transplant. We can implement my my talk with to Dr. Manel and Dr. Whitney to expanding uh, implementing educational courses in different liver diseases and liver cancer metabolic liver disease and surgery and liver transplant among African countries. And I believe we can now uh, open the, the discussion and uh, there will be a round table discussion. You Professor me, Nabil, Ashraf. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> dear colleagues, dear friends, it's my pleasure to present you our modest experience in the long-term follow-up of uh, liver recipient uh, transplant. I have uh, no disclosure containing this uh, presentation. We start our uh, liver transplant activity in 2003 with a close collaboration with uh, Professor Karim Boujema from Rennes in uh, France. He's uh, originate from uh, Algeria. Then uh, Professor Bujema uh, moved to uh, Batna in the east of our country uh, and uh, then they stopped after four, uh, four uh, transplantation. So in, in my hospital we are autonomous since uh, 2019 uh, in uh, Marie Curie Center with Professor Kamel Bentabak. Then we have a second center uh, in a military hospital in the east of the country with uh, Professor Lamara and Professor Bujema. It is important to note that uh, we do not perform uh, liver transplantation during COVID-19. And we uh, restart in April 22. Unfortunately, uh, liver transplantation outside the country is increasing. So the follow-up is uh, crucial for patient and graft survival. So the objective of uh, this retrospective study is the long-term follow-up above three months. So we look for the rejection, biliary complication, post-liver post transplant metabolic syndrome, the recurrence of initial disease, infectious complication, cancer, and we look for the survival at five and 10 years. Concerning the methodology, we look first to the metabolic syndrome uh, according to the criteria of the IDF, a very known criteria. Concerning the, the, the uh, renal insufficiency, uh, insufficiency uh, we uh, follow the Kaidigo uh, criteria as listed here from uh, the G1 to G5. For the recurrence of initial disease, we make the liver biopsy for the uh, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, disumen, and for hepatocellular carcinoma, we use the alpha photoprotein and CT scan. For the biliary complication, we, uh, we search uh, cholestasis and uh, when the biliary MRI is indicated. For cancer, we have uh, a regular uh, workup with dermat dermatologist, gynecologist, endoscopy, and marker tumor related to the initial disease. For the rejection, the liver biopsy is mandatory. And we use for the acute, the BAMF score, and for the chronic, uh, rejection, we search for the vanishing bill duct syndrome. So the survival curve at five at and uh, 10 years, we use the kaplan meier met method. For the variable, we use the hardware S SPSS 20. This is our result from uh, uh, 
February uh, two 2003 to, uh, to August 21, uh, 96 patients are included. The mean age was uh, uh, 47 years and the sex ratio 1.66. The uh, living donor transplantation performed is 82, and this is, this is donor is 14. Locally, <laughs> we perform 49 uh, uh, liver, donor liver transplantation, and uh, an, an, uh, a huge number of patients underwent transplantation in Turkey. And for the deceased donor, the majority underwent transplantation in, uh, in France. And we have three patients with liver kidney transplantation uh, for oxalysis. This is the indication of uh, transplantation. Uh, the main cause, you, it's uh, viral, autoimmune, cryptogenetic, PBC, Betchiari, HCC, and alcoholic. So uh, the death occurred uh, before three months in 50 patients. So we include in uh, this uh, retrospective uh, study 81 patients with a long-term follow-up over three months. It is important to note that we have no donor mortality in, uh, uh, in the liver, donor liver transplantation uh, underwent in our department. For the immunosuppression is classical, tacrolimus in the majority of patients, then the cyclosporin, uh, we add uh, mycophenolate mofetil, and prednisolone uh, for the dysimmune uh, etiology. Uh, we, uh, we have uh, a metabolic uh, syndrome with arterial hypertension in 27%, diabetes in 26%, and hyperlemia in 8.6%. Uh, concerning the renal uh, uh, insufficiency, we have uh, advanced renal insufficiency in 3, 4, 40% uh, uh, patient and two patients require, require dialysis. Concerning biliary complication, as accepted, the majority in living donor liver transplantation. So we, uh, we treat first with endoscopy, uh, with stenting, and we have a five patency. In case of failure, uh, we go to surgery with anastomos a la roue, and when patient underwent interventional radiology plus endoscopy. Concerning the recurrence of initial disease, you see in the table the majority of liver biopsy has perfor had performed in uh, HCV, but it was in era of interferon. And you have more advanced disease in autoimmune hepatitis, and uh, NASH and uh, autoimmune de novo in cryptogenetic cirrhosis. It is important to note that in uh, our cohort, we have nine uh, hepatocellular carcinoma and no recurrence in eight. The rejection in four in two mild, reje mild acute rejection, one, in, one chronic and one humoral. Concerning the infection in 19 uh, pa uh, patients, and the main cause is COVID-19. Concerning cancer, cancer occurred over the five years, and we have a cavum in alcoholic cirrhosis, cerebral in cryptogenotic cirrhosis, cholangiocarcinoma in hepatitis B, and the colon cancer in autoimmune hepatitis. This is the list of the deaths over three months. We have 17, four with COVID-19, four with cancer, six with renal failure, and one with fulminant bed carry, one with hepatic insufficiency, and one with vitamin K antagonist overdose. This is our overall survival for all the patients, and you, as you can see, 
is uh, 74 and 69% respectively at five and 10 years. But if we look only the patient uh, underwent transplantation in our department, this uh, survival decreased to 50%. To conclude, it's our first local and rare reporting of follow-up in Africa. As you can see, implementation of liver transplantation in our context is very challenging. So there is an imbalance between the supply and demand. And unfortunately, liver transplantation outside the country is increasing. And thank you for your attention.